Welcome Jack to Nerdy fans to another review video. Today we are reviewing the entire season one of Game of Thrones House of the Dragon. Uh, before we jump into that review though, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you guys never miss out on a video. And if you do enjoy this content, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. That way that lets us know that you are enjoying the content that we are putting out there. And it encourages us to keep going. So with that out of the way, Season 1 of Game of Thrones House of the Dragon. So at the end of uh, the original Game of Thrones, um, a lot of people, you know, it came with a lot of mixed reviews. A lot, a lot of people loved it. A lot of people hated it. There were a lot of people who were um, hesitant about watching another Game of Thrones show. Um, look. I was all in, you know, when they announced this, you know, uh, I, I loved the original, um, series or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so any, any more content that they can give me based in this world, um, I'm all in for there, uh, there were rumors of other stories that they were developing, which I was more interested in than this, but that being said, just gimme, 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 whatever you can give me in this world, I will take. So, um, if you watched my initial reaction video to episode one when it came out about 10 weeks ago, um, as I said, you know, it was so good to be back in this world, uh, seeing familiar sights, uh, similar landscapes, hearing uh, similar names, you know, names of houses and things like that. Um, and I'm still, I still feel the same way, even at the end of, of the, uh, the season that it just felt really, really good to be back in this world of George R.R. R. Martin. Um, you know, hearing these names, uh, seeing, uh, new characters that we're not familiar with, um, unless you read the books, of course. Uh, but you know, seeing new characters depicted, hearing new stories, um, you know, it just felt really 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 nice to be back in this world um now obviously um no show is perfect you know there are things that um you know uh you, you know people don't like about shows there are things that people love um on the whole this show was fantastically made um the the writing the acting, the directing, the storytelling, the you know the cinematography. This show was brilliantly made, which is what we've come to expect from HBO. I'm I'm sorry, I don't care who you are, but HBO when they put out a project, um, they give it a hundred and ten percent. You know, um, I've yet to experience any HBO series that hasn't had the most beautiful quality and, and effort and time spent on it. Um, this this show, like, I, I would dare say, it is one of the best produced um, TV series of the year. I, I would rank it right up there. I don't know if I would rank it number one. It's very, very close. Um, I'll just have to wait and see between now and the end of the year. Um, because we've still got a couple more shows to come out this year. So at the end of the year, we'll see where it falls in, say, top five. Um, but it is definitely up there um, with the best of the best. Um, so obviously some... Uh, so, you know, I mean, look, acting. You've got actors like Millie Alcock, Olivia Cook, who, who you would recognize from Ready Player One. Um, Matt Smith, who you would recognize from Doctor Who, obviously. Um, Emma Darcy, uh, who, Pat, Patty Constantine, uh, um, or Constantine, um, however you want to pronounce it. Phenomenal actor. His acting in this was absolutely phenomenal. Um, uh, Emily uh, Carey, um, and lots, 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 lots more. The, the, this, this show is stacked with fantastic talent and actors and actresses and um you know it it's absolutely stacked as you would expect from game of thrones um and hbo 
um, you know, as I said, the writing, uh, you know, the you know the the moments of tension, the moments of levity, you know, um, you know, you're on an emotional roller coaster throughout the whole series um, or season, I should say. Um, you know, um, you know the the stories of the, the interconnectivity, the webs, and and everything. It it, it is one hundred percent Game of Thrones. The game is being played. Um, the the negatives I would say is as with, with most shows, when you watch a season, that season usually takes place over the course of a twelve month period. So you're seeing a year lived out from from start to finish in a season um usually um with this because they had a lot of ground to cover I, as i understand it because they had a lot of ground to cover um they you basically the first season of this show takes place over the course of 15 uh, about approximately 15 to 16 years so there are multiple uh time jumps during this um, uh, season, that can throw people off a little bit, um, especially because you've got to age up the characters. So the act, the actors and actresses that you come to love in the first three ep- uh, first few episodes, once you have a time jump, they've been replaced by a different actor and actress, um, which throws people off a little bit. Um, I mean, it threw me off a little bit. Uh, but over the course of the, the, the season, you kind of forget and you, you move on and what have you. So, um, yeah, I mean, it is a shame because you've got some very, very talented people in these roles that you would just love to see them continue to play those roles, but then they get replaced because they need to be aged up or what have you. Um, so look, it is tough. Um, you know, so that in itself would have thrown a lot of people, off, well, throws people off a bit. Um, there are also, obviously, as you come to expect, graph with um, Game of Thrones. There's graphic um, moments, I should say, because this is a non-spoiler review. I don't want to throw anything away, but obviously, you know, warnings. Um, there is very graphic. Um, both violence but also sexual um, scenes graphically sexual scenes um, throughout this show so viewer discretion is advised there obviously if you're squirmish about those sorts of things just be forewarned Um, but then again if if you're squirmish about those things why are you watching Game of Thrones Um, you should have learnt your lesson from the first season now Speaking of the first season, what some people I've heard some people online asking is, do you have to have watched the original Game of Thrones series before watching this? Uh, my answer to that is no. You can watch this completely separate, and having never watched Game of Thrones before, and completely understand what's going on. Pretty much, you know, uh, well, you, you 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 can understand ninety to 95% of what's going on without having any prior knowledge of Game of Thrones. Um, and you can st- and you will enjoy it just as much, um, if not a- as much as everyone else. If So yeah, so you don't have to have watched the original Game of Thrones series in order to watch this. If you have watched the original Game of Thrones series though, that additional 5 to 10% will heighten your experience and and build upon your experience and make you appreciate um, certain things even more. Um, you know, you'll see certain landmarks from the original series that you have an emotional connection to or some sort of connection to. You'll see certain um, objects and artifacts and things like that because this series takes place a hundred years before the, the Game of Thrones. So... Yeah, so you'll see certain um, swords or artifacts or you know, um, you know, relics um, spread throughout as almost as little Easter eggs, um, uh, but also some of very obvious things. Um, so you'll 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 see them and you'll recognise them from the original Game of Thrones series, and it will just make you enjoy the story even more. So look, so yeah, so. 
uninitiated people to Game of Thrones will enjoy it and completely understand what's going on. People who are diehard Game of Thrones lovers will watch it and enjoy it even more. Um, you know, uh, my wife, who you know wasn't the biggest uh, Game of Thrones fan, like she enjoyed the start of it, but then fell off halfway through. Um, she absolutely loves this show. You know, uh, Mrs. Jack the Nerdy loves House of the Dragon. Um, last night when we watched the final episode, she was very, very disappointed that that was the final episode of the series and there wasn't more to come. Um, typical Game of Thrones fashion. They leave you at a point where you just, you absolutely want more and you want it more now. You don't want to have to wait 12 months for the next season. So, um, you know, and, and I, look, I felt the same. I felt the same. As always, typical Game of Thrones, like the season season one finale hits and you're just like, oh my God, I want to know what, I want to know what happens. So, um, look, so that that's my, you know, kind of, uh, rundown of it. As I said, look, this show works 100% as its own thing. Um, and I think that's, that's a true testament to whether or not a show is any good is if you can, if you can take, remove it from the source material or remove it from any other kind of, um, association of any other franchise or anything and and you and you look at it and say can this do, or does this work as a standalone feature um you know uh the lord of the rings the rings of power um it, you know if you look at that and you say okay removing any and all connection from the peter jackson films um, and the Lord of the Rings books and all of that other source material as a completely standalone show. Let's just say we call it the Rings of Power. Remove the Lord of the Rings and just call it Rings of Power. Does does it work? Or, or even still, you could take that out of it and let's just call it um, Mystical Magical Fantasy Land. Does it work as a standalone feature? My answer to that would be absolutely yes, it does. Take... Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. Take the Game of Thrones out of it um, and just call it House of the Dragon and forget that it's got any connection or affiliation to the Game of Thrones franchise. Ta forget that it's got any connection whatsoever to books that we love, um, you know, that people love and, and associate with it and just take it as a complete standalone season one of a fantasy TV show does it stand on its own two feet and work and my answer is 100% yes it does and I love it I can't wait for more thank god we don't have to wait several years for the next season season two is already I believe in some form of production um they may not be filming but you know it they're at least um, you know, uh, wheels are turning. So hopefully, God willing, we only have to wait maybe 12 months um, for the next season. Um, I'm 100% on board, cannot wait. Uh, it cannot come quickly enough. So um, that's my overall thoughts on season one of house of the dragon what were your thoughts did you enjoy it as much as i did um are you excited for season two hit me up in the comments let me know your thoughts and um again as i said at the beginning of the video if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button give this video a thumbs up and we'll catch you later until next time stay jacked and stay nerdy